morning as I was um, watching the video again, you know that video with those kids makes me cry every single time. And I thought, what if instead of it said perfect, what if it said that life is beautiful? Maybe we would have less need to control our lives and have them be a certain way and then beat ourselves up when it's not, you know, right? Or that perfectionism thing. Maybe we could just say that life is beautiful. There is one life, that life is God's life. That life is beautiful. And that life, that life is my life right now. Wow. That, that's a mouthful. That is an extraordinary statement. And if I can see it for myself, I can see it in each of you, and I can see it in all people, and I can see it in all beings. There's a beautiful life being expressed. I've been talking about our global vision um, for the last couple of weeks in service to this notion that a world, uh, for a world that works for everyone. And so our global vision is a lovely vision, right? Something that we, that we hope for, dream about, think about, um, as, a, as a draw forward, to draw us forward. Just as we write vision boards, have vision boards, or write affirmations about what we would like our own life to look like over time. And yet a vision is something that pulls us outward. And we can't move towards a vision unless we have a place to stand. And a way of being in the world that serves the life that we seek to have. So we're going to start with a fundamental teaching from the science of mind. There is only one life. This notion that there is only one life is a part of that which gives us a place to stand in the world. And it's, it's somewhat of a mystery. How can it be only one life when there's you and me? and a planet, and trees, and molecules, and atoms, and the multiplicity of form, the multiplicity of things, the multiplicity of the created universe. And yet we we believe, and we teach, and we seek to practice that this is all only one life, that there's only one thing happening here, and everything is somehow a part of it. Somehow, there is all of life, all beings, and all people are expressions of this one. Yeah, and it's a bit of a mystery. And it's something that we can't always grabble, gra- grasp with our, co- with our intellectual consciousness, right? But it is something that we can experience. We experience it in our spiritual practices. We experience it every time we meditate, every time we do spiritual mind treatment, every time we're in service to each other as we um, give and share with each other, every time we allow ourselves to move into that deeper space, we have the opportunity to experience this notion, this underlying oneness. Well, out of this underlying belief in oneness comes a way of understanding the world, understanding the universe, understanding God, understanding our place in it. And, um, and so we call that our Declaration of Principles. So all year we're going to be playing with this um, relationship between vision and spiritual principle and spiritual practice and where we stand. And the Declaration of Principles gives us this powerful understanding of the way life works and the way that we move in the world. Now, the Declaration of Principles was written by Ernest Holmes in 1927. Um, They'd started the Science of Mind magazine in 1926, and people were asking, well, well, what is this thing that you do? And um, and and what do you believe? And what? How does this all work? And and I don't you know, so I don't really get it. And so he wrote in the Science of Mind magazine. He wrote a thing, and he called it "What I Believe." I believe this, and I believe that, and I believe this other thing, and this is how I believe. This is how I understand it, it works. And of course, we use the language of "I believe" because of the time period in which he was writing. Uh, Very much so, um, people were used to reciting creeds of belief. And so he wrote those all down. 
And over time, our um, uh, uh, movement, Centers for Spiritual Living, have, has reflected on these statements of what I believe and have said, whoa, th- that's pretty good. <laughs> and, you know, people have worked with it and tried to rewrite it, and each time it's like, actually, you know what, Ernest Holmes sort of knew what he was talking about. And we kind of like it. We kind of think it's pretty good. And so it was turned into what we believe. And so hopefully you received one as you entered in. Um, You received, this is our Declaration of Principles. And this is a powerful statement of what we believe. What does it mean that there's only one life? And and what is my part in it? And and how does that work? And so... So I'm gonna, I need 11 people. I'd like to have 11 people come up here, and we're going to read the Declaration of Principles. Um, so this is the audience participation time. <laughs> All right. So I need 11 people up here to, um, to come up here and read. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Perfect. I think, Debbie, you're counted. Come on up here, right up here. One, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Hello? Ah, here comes Linda. Oh, here comes Sharon. Okay. <laughs> Great. Here you go. All right. And so, um, so we're going to, and just in, we're just going to take it in, just invite ourselves to take it in and just read it one stanza at a time, okay? We believe in God, one indestructible indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause. This one, man- this one manifests itself in and through all creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical and necessary outcome of God's nature. We believe in the incarnation of the spirit in all people. We believe in the eternality the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. We believe that heaven is within us. We experience it as we become conscious of it. We believe the ultimate goal of life is to be a complete emancipation from all discord and that this goal is sure to be attained by every person. We believe in the unity of all life. The highest God and the innermost God is one God. We believe in the direct revelation of truth through our intuitive and spiritual nature and that any one may become a revealer of truth. We believe that the universal spirit, God operates through a universal mind the law of God. We are surrounded by this creative mind which receives the direct impress of our thoughts and acts upon it. We believe in the healing of the sick and the control of conditions through the power of this mind. We believe in the goodness, loving kindness, and givingness of life. To all. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny, for we understand that the life of each one is God. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. So, what we believe. Now, it's so interesting to think about this, too, because Ernest Holmes, you know, he wrote this as a personal statement. The... Um, uh, the organization took it up as a um, what we believe statement, but we don't actually have it as a creed or doctrine or dogma. You're not actually required to buy into every statement. Um, and just like the global vision, you're not, a, you're, actually, you're not actually required to take it on or take it up in its wholeness, but to allow those parts of it that work on you and that maybe invite you into something larger. We believe in God, the one living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause, the one life. Everything starts in the science of mind from the belief in the one. 
and that everything is an expression of that one. All beings, all people, all life is an expression of that one. So we want to have an opportunity to explore that a little bit. So we're going to start with this video. We see all beings as expressions of God. And isn't it beautiful to look out in nature? And for me personally, it's very easy for me to see that all beings are expressions of God. And I see those beautiful images. When I first went to school, I went in for environmental science, and I have a deep love for nature. And I remember being in my, found, first, my foundations class, and I remember standing at the door of the center in Seattle and looking at the full moon. And seeing God there, and feeling the expression of the divine. And then I remember looking at all the buildings and houses and not feeling God there. And, and I despaired. I thought, what do you mean it's all one life? I don't really get that. And I struggled with that for a long time, seeing nature, seeing God in nature. And... <laughs> Someday Starbucks is going to pay me for all the times I've said Starbucks from this platform, I swear to God. I had one of the most profound experiences of oneness and one life literally in a Starbucks. I was waiting for my coffee, patiently waiting, and, and somehow I looked at the cup and I thought, wow, somebody designed that cup. Somebody made the paper that made that cup. Somebody manufactured that cup. Somebody trucked that cup here to this location. Somebody is going to pick that cup up and make a cup of coffee in it. And that's just the cup. 
Now we have to talk about the straw. We have to talk about the lid. Then we have to look at the light that's hanging from here. Somebody designed that light. Somebody had to figure out what it was going to and, and I, I literally, I had such an experience of oneness, realizing that everything that was man-made in there was also a part of the one life. It was an extraordinary moment of opening, right? We really believe that all beings, all, all of it, is expression of one life. And so that includes the people. We see all people as an expression of God. So look around the room, right? Here we go. All people as expressions of God. We, I love this photograph of our community. And it's, it's easy, isn't it? We look around and we say, oh my gosh, yes, yes. We're all a little different. We have different ideas. We have different ways of looking at the world. But we can really see that. And as we do our spiritual practice, as we meditate, as we do prayer for each other, um, as we are in service to each other, we experience more and more and more of that oneness. Well, when I first got into the science of mind, I actually found it very easy to see that in other people. But I confess to you that I was one of those people who walked in the back of the room, and I did not want to be hugged. Well, I chalked it up at the time to my introversion, and people would try to hug me and I'd step back. Really. And what I discovered as I was doing my work, all my classes and all that work, is I discovered that while I could see God out there, I actually didn't believe that those hugs were really for me. Oh, yeah, I could see those people hugging each other, and they'd been there for a while, and, you, oh, yeah, I could see that. Oh, they loved each other, but... When they hugged me, yeah, I was certain it was phony because they couldn't really mean me. So while we see all people as expressions of God, the question is, what do we see when we look in the mirror? Watch this. Basically, I'm making an integrated arts video and I'm just taking pictures of things I find beautiful. Things uh, that I find beautiful. Of course. So I just need you to stand there and exist. Of things I find beautiful. And I think you're a beautiful person. Of course. It's so awkward. It's not. Okay. <laughs> Things I find beautiful. You got a great look. You're beautiful. <laughs> Just taking pictures of things I find beautiful. I find beautiful. And so, yeah. I think you got a really good look, so I take a picture of you. I find beautiful. I'm taking pictures of things I find beautiful. Things <laughs> I find beautiful. So yeah. yeah. Just continue to look at me. Just, just a dude. 
anything? Yeah, do anything you want. Beautiful. <laughs> Things I find beautiful. Things I find beautiful. Things I find beautiful. Of course. Things I find beautiful, so. Things I find beautiful. I'm just taking pictures of things I find beautiful. That is so nice. <laughs> well, it's the truth. This has been such a great day. One couldn't accept it at all. One felt like he needed to dance to earn it. But did you see how each face softened? What do you want from me? Oh, me? We see all people as expressions of God. That includes us. That includes who we see when we look in the mirror. And when we say one life, that is a radical statement, and it's something that we profoundly believe. And we are not left out of the equation. One life. And, and if you look at all those kids that she took pictures of, none of them would necessarily be on a magazine cover as beautiful, right? And how many times and ways we say, well, yes, but you know, my hair and I have a little too much weight, and I'm a little too short, and I'm a little too tall, or I'm a little, uh, 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 right? All the excuses we make. And when the excuses aren't external excuses, we make internal excuses. Like excuses about, um, well, you know, I'm, I'm really not very good at this, so don't expect too much. Well, you know, I've not done this before, so if I mess up, don't I? You know, I just expect that I... And we make all kinds of statements that indicate that we recognize that all beings and all nature and all these things out there are part of God and that all people are a part of God, except us. And so when we say one life, we mean, we mean that, one life, we're a part of that life. And, then that, and that means that our life and the expression of our life and the experiences that we have in our life are part of that one life. Now, that doesn't mean make every experience perfect or even what we want. But what it does mean is that each and every one of us have the opportunity as a part of that one life to utilize the principles and practices to understand the law and to manifest what we choose, what we believe, the kind of life that we desire. You see, if it's one life, each and every one of us have the opportunity to express it. And we don't have to earn our spirituality. 
We don't have to be good for the law to respond to us. We don't have to turn ourselves into some sort of pretzel or not or try to be something that we're not. We simply have to understand that we're part of the one life and that there is a power and a presence that's moving in through and as each one of us and that this power, this universal power is available to us and that we can use it however we choose. We can use it to make a mess or we can use it to make the life of our dreams. And all we have to do is to wake up to that fact, to wake up to the fact that all life is an expression of the divine. And this is, again, where part of that mystery comes in. Well, prove it to me. Well, how do you know this is true? Well, I don't really know whether this is going to work for me or not. Right? This is the mystery of it. And the only way to experience it is to try it is to imagine that there is, in fact, one life and that there is a power and a presence that's moving through us and that there is a way that we can learn how to use it. So we see all life as expressions of God. Even the obstacles, even the challenges, even the opportunities. Well, and partly it depends on how we describe them to ourselves. Do we describe them to ourselves as things that boulders in the way that we can't get around and so therefore we're victims of our circumstances or we're, we're just plain nuts not going to work out or we wonder whether God wants us to have it. Or we can see our obstacles as challenges, opportunities, ways in which we can express the fact that, no, we're capable of choosing, and we're capable of using the universal power in, in accordance with the way the universe operates, and we can, as we read it this morning, heal the sick and control conditions. We can manifest the life of our dreams. And if that's true for everybody that we see, that is absolutely true for us. We're not left out of the equation. And again, th this is not something that we can intellectually get ourselves to. This is something that we, can, that we have to practice. This is why we have classes. This is why we have a Wednesday series. This is why we talk about this on Sunday mornings. This is why we do, this is why we do community. You can go out and you can read the book all by yourself, and you can, we can all get the, the knowledge, the information, but the practice of it, right? The practice of it, that's what we do together. We practice it and we remind each other because boy, oh boy, if I can see it in you and I can see that you have managed to get over, through, and around or, or, or poof that obstacle out of the way, then I can too. Do you see? So I love this quote by Albert Einstein, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the course of all true art and science. The mysterious notion that we're all one. That there is one life, one power, one presence, that it's moving somehow in, through all of these things that appear to be separate. And that it's actually moving through us that we are the divine made manifest and that we use the creative process, these principles that we can learn, that we can actually use that. And this is where I think sometimes our feelings send us awry because sometimes we don't feel one, do we? We feel disconnected. We feel left out. We feel apart. We feel... Like, we can't do it. We feel stupid. We feel different than everybody else. We feel whatever it is that we feel. We feel inadequate, whatever it is. And we believe those feelings as if they were true. But they're not. They're just feelings that our human experience is having. And so what we do over and over and over again is we find that place to stand I am a stand for love in my life. I'm a stand for peace. I'm a stand for joy. I'm a stand for the creative process. I'm a stand in my own life and in your life. We find that place to stand. 
that allows us then to move in the world with confidence, with confidence and a positive expectation that the universe supports us and that things are working out for good. Ernest Holmes says it this way, there is only one life, that life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. Now, the other place that we get caught a lot on in science of mind is this notion of perf perfect, because many of us run around with a perfectionism gene, right? And so we equate perfect and perfectionism. And we, yeah, so this is not what Ernest Holmes means when he says the word perfect. He doesn't mean that we never make mistakes. He doesn't mean that we never do something wrong or inappropriate. And we often think of perfect as flawless and complete. Well, I don't know about you, but my life is not yet flawless and complete. <laughs> I'm still on the planet. I'm still breathing. I'm still working it out, right? And so perfect, he, Ernest Holmes, I, I think he intends more a sense of wholeness. I'm holy myself. You're holy and fully yourself. Actually, I was wondering this morning as I was um, watching the video again, you know, that video with those kids makes me cry every single time. And I thought, what if instead of it said perfect, what if it said that life is beautiful? Maybe we would have less need to control our lives and have them be a certain way and then beat ourselves up when it's not, you know, right? And that perfectionism thing. Maybe we could just say that life is beautiful. There is one life. That life is God's life. That life is beautiful. And that life, that life is my life right now. Wow. That, that's a mouthful. That is an extraordinary statement. And if I can see it for myself, I can see it in each of you, and I can see it in all people, and I can see it in all beings. There's a beautiful life being expressed. Now, it seems appropriate. Um, I learned this uh, particular, um, uh, this particular um, quote by Ernest Holmes. I learned it as a chant from Reverend Edward Villune. I learned it the last time I went to Bali. And as you know, many of us are, are heading out to Bali um, on Monday, and a whole other group is going to join us over there the 1st of February. Um, and, and so in Bali, in Hinduism, they have these mala beads. And the mala beads, there's 108 beads. It's for the 108 illusions that we suffer under, and ultimately it's the belief in separation. It's the belief that we're not a part of the whole, that we don't belong, and that we don't know what we're doing, and that life is, you know, we're a victim of this terrible life that we're having. And so we pray the 101, uh, 108 beads to, to dispel the 108 illusions. Okay, so Reverend Edward, one of the first times he was in Bali, um, they were going to one of the temples where we're going to go, and they were praying with the monk, and then they were having a, a private session with the monk afterwards, the, the Hindu priest that was there. And he said, oh, you're, you're wearing mala beads. Um, he's, the the, the um, priest said to Edward, um, you're wearing mala beads, so, so what do you chant on your mala beads? And Edward's thinking, I wear them as a fashion statement. As a spiritual <laughs> being, I don't really chant on one. And he's like scrambling in his mind thinking, okay, how do I not offend him? What am I going to say? Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Right? So there was, he was with a, his... Um, uh, one of the people from his community, they were traveling together. They were in this particular personal um, meeting with the priest together. And the guy, man, he was, this phrase came to him because it's one of his favorite quotes of Ernest Holmes. And he said, oh, well, you know, our chant is there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. Thinking, okay, well, that would satisfy him and that would be enough. And the monk said, oh, great. Got out his mala beads. Let's chant it now. <laughs> and they're like, well, okay. Go ahead, start. How do you do it? So they made it up on the spot. <laughs> Everett Edward has been teaching people this chant since then. That was, gosh, 12, 15 years ago. Who knows how long ago by now. Um, Edward, uh, Reverend Edward, and he taught it to us when we were in Bali in 08, and we've been teaching it here ever since. Um, and so we're going to do this chant together um, because... What we're doing is we're literally having an opportunity to dispel the false beliefs and plant new ones, right? Those synapses that fire together, wire together. 
And when we do this kind of chanting 108 times, it's a really long time. So don't think about how long it's going to take. Just keep chanting. Because what you're doing is you're laying down a new truth that is not, I don't fit, I don't belong, I don't know what I'm doing. But you're laying down the spiritual truth. You're deciding to accept a spiritual truth even if you haven't always experienced it. Do you see that's part of the mystery? The mystery that we can claim this truth even though our whole life doesn't outpicture. We can claim this truth, and the more we claim it, the more deeply embedded it becomes in our consciousness. So when we chant, we're going to chant in the Hindu style. It's going to be a little different. When you chant in the Hindu style, you chant pretty quickly. And it's not quite a monotone. One of the things you'll notice as you're chanting 108 times, the different words will serve, will, will take on an emphasis for you as you're chanting. Just let that be. Just notice. Um, and when we chant, um, I'm going to start out, I'm going to start out a little bit loudly because I want everybody to be able to follow it. Actually, we're going to take this off because I don't want you to read it. I want you to chant it. And um, you'll hear it. Trust yourself. Just trust yourself. Trust the people around you. And you'll hear it. And so what we, how we um, chant appropriately is that you chant at the level of loudness that allows you to hear the people around you. Right? Because we're chanting together. And remember that a prayer said out loud, sung or said out loud or chanted as a prayer twice prayed because we speak it and we hear it at the same time. And so we are profoundly impacting our consciousness when we do this. So I'm going to start out a little bit loudly, just so that everybody can follow. And when I feel like we've, we're in a groove, I'm going, to start, I'm going to start using my chanting voice so you won't hear me quite so loudly because I also want to hear um, the people around me, okay? And so when you're ready, um, join in. And I invite you to just keep chanting, even though your brain is saying, well, this is stupid. Is it ever going to be over? Oh, my God, I can't believe we're still doing this, right? Just keep chanting. All right, so whenever you're ready, you just join right in. <clears throat> there is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one life. 
That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. Perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. 
That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. Life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life. Now there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. And so it is. So there's only one life. And as we really take up the five spiritual practices that we teach here, 
we, we become more and more of that presence of this one life. And I, was, I wanted to share something with you. I was so struck this morning. It just so happened that um, Dr. Peter and I were in here on Friday doing some videoing of the new space and casting the vision, and, and I was just so, like, just filled up with this community and this life and this one life and, and just the joy. And immediately following that, um, I happened to go and walk into a market, a local market here, and I could just feel it, like the presence. And as I stepped into the market, um, someone... Um, said, oh, hi. And I looked up and I went, hi. And she said, this beautiful, beautiful being was in front of me. And she said, how did your trip go at the first of the year? And I'm looking at her and I'm like, I, I don't know that I know you. Um, do you go to CSL Dallas? And she was like, no. And I said, oh, well, I'm a minister there. And, but it was like God meeting God. It was like we knew each other, like knew. God saw God, felt it, the presence. It was like this instant, you know, these moments in your life. I was at the back of the sanctuary, you know, hugging everybody as they went out, and I hugged that person. I turned to the next, and I went, hi. And there stood Jade. Because of the presence of how we move into the world, people are drawn to us. And then they want to know about our life. And, what, and all I did was say CSL Dallas. So she had to go to the website and check it out. And we are the presence. And that presence draws the presence to us. And so as we take up these spiritual practices and become more of this presence, it truly is a world that works for everyone. And we all recognize each other, even as strangers. So I just want, that was amazing. It was like my whole world just went, ah. Because she wanted to come and be in this community. And as we move about our, our life and our days, we are that presence. So I invite us to take up all these spiritual practices that we teach. Um, there's, there is spiritual mind treatment. There is visioning. Um, there is uh, sacred service. There's sacred giving, and the fifth is meditation, what we just did. That's why I couldn't remember <laughs> chanting. I was so steeped in it. So this is the time as the ushers are coming up for us to do some sacred giving, that we get to take up that spiritual practice and to be that presence in the world. And as we do that, we see each other. We are each other in this community and outside of this community.